this portion uh, ahmed you can see my mouse my mouse cursor correct yeah uh, mouse yes. no mouse yes now yes okay so at this portion here i will be explaining with the mouse you can see the stent tube here in between you have what is supporting the tail shaft and the intermediate shaft we call it the intermediate shaft bearing or intermediate bearings okay so this is basically this is the standard uh, shafting system of a large scale uh, vessel. You get something like this all the time. Okay, guys, any question in here? No, so that's all clear. Okay. Okay, so this is how it looks uh, in reality. Uh, you have something, we, if you look at the, the side of the where the picture was taken, it was taken from the engine side. Okay, so you can see the intermediate shaft is in front of you. Okay, you have here intermediate shaft bearing. Okay, here is the coupling where it is connected together. It is flange type and then connected to the tail shaft. And you have another intermediate shaft bearing in here before it passed through the stem tube. So this is how it looks in reality, in real uh, as, as a real photo. Okay, now we will start looking at the stem tube. Okay, the stem tube is the area where it, the shaft will pass through the hull going outside of the water means uh, the shaft is rotating and we have to keep the integrity the hull integrity so the water will not go inside the engine room so the main purpose of the stent tube is to make this connection bet bef between the inside of the of the vessel or the engine room and the outside where it is the seawater okay so this is the how it looks the stent tube in in, in all the cases okay so if we if you look here i have highlighted what we call it the bearings, the stent tube bearings in red color. So here is the one, as you can see. These bearings are the bearing where the shaft, the tail shaft is supported. Now you can, the, the shafts, it may uh, reach up to 15, 16 meters. For example, the one segment of a shaft, for example, the tail shaft can reach to 15, 16 meters. The intermediate shaft can reach to 11, 12 or more. It depends on the design. So the shaft, as it passed to, through this long distance, it has to be supported. From inside the engine room, we support it by this, what we discussed, which is the intermediate shaft bearing. But since it passed through this tube, it has to be supported inside the tube. So the, the means of support is the bearing, where we call this. This is the aft bearing in the aft side, and this is the forward bearing. So when you hear the term stem tube aft bearing, we are referring to this portion. And when you when we say the stent tube forward bearing, we are referring to this portion. So this is the main component, the first main component of the stent tube. The stent tube is nothing but a normal tube, steel tube, and inside the tube you will be having those two bearings again. Okay. The second main component is the seals, where I, you can see it here. This is the area where I'm highlighting the seal. It, it it depends on the type of the stent tube. This we will be discussing in the in the in the next slides. You have many types of stem tube. Okay? It depends on the cooling system or, or the lubrication system inside the stem tube, you will be having the type of seal. So in this case, it is oil lubrication, so we have double seals. We will discuss the other scenarios in the coming, uh, in the coming slides. So these seals is where we isolate the stem tube, the liquid inside it, if it is oil lubrication, the oil inside the stem tube, we avoid it going to the seawater by the aft seal, which is in here. And we avoid the oil to go inside the inside the engine room by this seal. So this is the sealing system where it closed the stem tube from outside. Means this is the protection. This is where we cut the water from going inside the engine room by these two seals. Clear, guys? Yes. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is a 3D model of how it goes. You can see here is the engine on the right side of the screen. It goes to a gearbox coupled okay, to the tail uh, to the intermediate shaft. You have one intermediate shaft bearing. You have another coupling coupled to the tail shaft and the tail shaft will be passing to the stent tube. The stent tube, as we discussed, it is only a steel tube. You have here the forward bearing. You have here the aft bearing and it is connected to the propeller. Okay. This is the water lubrication stem tube. What, is, what does it mean? Means the inside bearings here, as we discussed, we have a forward bearing and we have aft bearing. Those two bearings has to be lubricated when, when the shaft is turning. 
we cannot turn anything in normally in the mechanical engineering if you have any turning component it has to be supported by any means it depends on the on the length of this equipment or the component and it has to this two supports or bearings or whatsoever is the component has to be lubricated any turning stuff has to be lubricated unless it is very special material which is self lubricated but this is another another subject to discuss so here those two bearings which we discussed the forward bearing and the aft bearing has to be lubricated so one of the lubrication terms is the seawater lubrication which is which is lubricated by the seawater so in here you don't see see there is no aft seal okay so there is no aft seal means that water will go from inside again we have a forced or pressurized water from inside the stent tube to move any debris or anything from the stent tube to move it outside but again it will be cooled by water the sea water will be cooling this stuff or lubricating this stuff so in this case you don't need a seal in here and the water will be inside and then you have only a single seal which is in the forward area this is to avoid the sea water from going inside but from outside it is directly open to the water this is the water lubrication stem tube okay now going to the types of the stent tubes you have the oil lubrication stent tube water lubrication stent tube and the grease lubrication stent tube the oil lubrication as the name mentioned or as we refer in the first slides you have double seals the seal from the aft side and the seal from the forward side and the stent tube will be filled with oil and this will be the main subject which we are going to discuss because this is the most common type of uh, stent tube system the other one, which is water lubrication, you can see it normally in the small vessels and some of the ferries, uh, uh, some of the sea, uh, means, uh, means normally in the ferries and the small size vessels. Uh, passenger vessels as well, it has this type of uh, stem tubes in most cases. And you have the grease lubrication stem tube. Grease lubrication stem tube, it will be inside it, a grease instead of the oil. Normally, this type of, of, of stent tube, you can find it in the dredgers and, and normally in the dredger and the, in the vessel where they are running in, in, uh, in shallow water because the sand and all this debris will be very intensive and will go inside the stent tube. So they protect the system with applying a grease, with having a grease inside the stent tube. Again, this is not so common system. Okay, now we are discussing the oil lubrication, which is the main one. This is how it looks. You have the hull, you have the stent tube passing through the hull, and you have the forward seal, as you can see, and you have the aft seal and the propeller. The aft seal will be having two segments. As you can see, this green is the seal component or the sealing system. This is the rubber seals. And those are the rings which is connecting the seal together. So the seal, it depends on the direction of the seals, where it is directed. If it is directed outside, means it protects from the sea water to go inside the stent tube. You can see these two seals are built to protect from going the water going inside the stent tube. Well, you have this one, the forward one. It protects the oil to go outside to the sea water. Again, from inside, since you don't have a sea water, you have only the engine room in here. You have two seals to protect or to avoid the oil inside the stent tube to go inside the engine room. And you can see this is the, the, the yellow one is the oil all over. And here is the seawater. Again, the aft bearing and the forward bearing. Tail shaft is passing through, supported by these two bearings, forward and aft, and the sealing system to avoid the oil, as we discussed, from going inside the engine room or escaping to the seawater and the seawater again from going inside the stent tube. So this is the Configuration of guys clear up to this moment. Yes. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay. Again, this is how it looks. You have the engine. Here it is a slow speed engine. They, we don't have a gearbox. You have the flywheel connected to the tail shaft, intermediate shaft bearing, coupled, tail shaft passing through, stem tube. Two bearings in here, the green ones. Seal, aft seal, it is uh, oil lubricated stent tube. Aft seal, forward seal, connected to the propeller. Passing through. Okay, guys. Okay, this is the uh, diagram of the whole components of this system. Now, how the system runs, okay? 
now we'll take it uh, gradually. We have three main uh, lubrication oil for this system. We have we will start from the let's start from here. This is the sum tank number D, as you can see. D is the sum tank. This is where the oil inside the stent tube for any cases, if you would like to drain it, you drain it inside the sump tank. Okay, so as you can see, it is a pipe connected to the inside the stent tube, one valve, another valve, you open these two valves, directly you drain the oil to the sump tank. Exactly like the sump tank of engine, but it will be located at a level below the stent tube level. So by gravity, it drains inside this one. Okay, the sump tank, will be connected to a pump. It, the pump will take the oil and pressurize it or move it upwards to the main loop oil tank. Okay, this is the tank, stem tube, loop oil tank. And here another tank, this is the emergency tank. Whenever it has any, any failure or whenever the, the, the level of water will be increased, you have an emergency tank, which is located slightly up of the main stem tube, loop oil tank. So by gravity, this tank will be filling the stem tube. As you can see, the pipe is connected, one valve, and then going to fill the stem tube. Okay, now since we discussed, we have two sealing components in the forward seal. You have the chamber in between, has to be lubricated, so we will avoid the seals from getting damaged. So we have the forward seal lube oil tank, which is C. Okay, the same criteria for the aft ones, you have three components and the, the, here this area will be uh, required to be lubricated. So we have the aft seal lube oil tank. As you can see, the tank will be taking one tube all the way to the aft seal. And this is the return line. So two lines, two tubes will be passing through the stent tube to lubricate the aft seal. By these two tubes, as you can see, the yellow ones going to the back side and the return line going back to the tank. Okay, guys, again here, this is the main tank, the oil inside. You can see it is passing through this orange line and it goes to fill the stent tube in orange. Now we need to drain the stent tube to pull, for example, when we are doing the dry docking repairs and surveying of the tail shaft, you have to empty the lube oil inside the stent tube. So once you pull this one, you don't have any pollution. The oil will not go inside and outside. So first you start with draining. How you drain? You just open this valve and that one, and then the stent tube and close this valve so the header tank will not keep supplying. Then you empty the stent tube in this something. When you are ready to fill again the stent tube by the pump, you push up the oil to the stent tube lube oil tank and you keep filling the stent tube. This is the standard loop oil system and the system, the filling of the stem tube and all the uh, pipelines uh, connected to the stem tube and from the stem tube. There is, this is the normal loop oil system. In, in the recent years, uh, like five, six, seven years back, they started with what we call the air type of stem tube, air system. What is, the, what is the air system? We don't discuss it here. It is an, something new that it is not, it's not common in everywhere, but it's still available in most of the vessels now. That instead of putting lube oil uh, tank for the aft seal, they put an air system, so they keep pressurizing air. This is for the pollution of the sea and to keep, it means to cope with the requirements of IMO for the sea pollution. So instead of making lube oil tank for the aft seal, where some of the oil will be drained to the water, they put air system compressor and they keep lubricating this one with air. Clear, guys? Ahmed, your sound is cutting in the last portion of the air. Okay. So instead, as, as, as I'm saying, instead of lubricating the aft seal with loop oil, with oil, where it, it will be drained to the outside of the seawater and it will have a certain percentage of pollution by this oil, okay, they are replacing this. B tank, which is the loop oil, the aft sea loop oil tank, with a, a air system. The air system, it is like some system to measure the drafts and to to calculate the 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 the, the pressure of the air that need to be supplied, and compressor. The compressor will keep feeding this area with compressed air to lubricate these seals instead of the oil. Clear, Ahmed, the sound? Oh yeah, okay, clear. Okay. 
Okay, guys, anything Sam, here? Sam, you don't have anything to ask? No, it's fine um, for me. Okay. Amr, you used to stop us to ask a lot. Why are you yeah, ask Amr, uh, not? <laughs> this will sure you will be having some question. Is it clear, guys? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm keeping uh, the questions for, for the end, if, if this is okay. No worries, okay, 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 I'm okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, this is the same system. Now we will see it in, 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 in a 3D way, a little bit more easier. Yeah. Here, this is the one. We will start with the aft seal loop oil tank, okay? The aft seal loop oil tank. You can see this pipe is going all the way through the stern tube and it will go to the seal. Again, this is not 100% because it cannot show everything. You will be having another line from underneath where it go back. This is the return line. So you fill, the filling line will be from the top and the return line, which is in the diagram in here, which I show it to you here. Normally it is from the outside, okay? This one will be missing in here in this diagram. So you have two lines to the aft seal, okay? Now you have the forward seal. This is the one, it goes to the forward seal, to the two chamber between the two seals, okay? Again, the return line is in here. This is the sun tank where you drain the stent tube, it goes in here, and then this sun tank will be connected to the pump. The pump will be connected to the loop oil tank and the emergency loop oil tank. These two tanks will be connected to the stent tube to fill the stent tube. Okay, guys, so these two tanks for the stand tube, normally it is bigger size than how it shows here. This is the aft seal, the oil tank. This is the forward seal, the oil tank. The pump, which takes, the, as I told you, this sun tank it is located at the level below the stand tube. So by gravity, it will be filled whenever you open the two bars down. And then when you need to fill the tank it's down, it's not clear, sir. Ahmad, it's on the sun, it's not clear. Okay. I'll just uh, talk slowly, maybe. Ahmad, is it clear now? It's clear, yeah. Okay. Yeah, super clear. So, so again, this is the sum tank where it is taken by gravity, sorry, as you yeah. said. Sorry, yeah. Abdurrahman, because he's just recently going now. Abdurrahman, uh, Ahmad, just uh, one minute brief quickly because Abdurrahman just joined. Okay. Again, quickly, Abdurrahman for Abdurrahman. Okay, this is so quickly how it how it looks. We have the uh, Ahmed the session. I think so. Yes, yeah, no, no, the session is recorded as well. So okay, they can also refer to this one. Okay. So okay, again, very quickly to sum up, we have the four pieces for the same, but um, just for the Abdurrahman, just to, to to comment with you. No problem. So we have the forward seal. The forward seal is replicated by the forward seal of oil tank. We have the aft seal. The aft seal is replicated by the, lob the aft seal lob oil tank. We have these two tanks for the stand tube for the lubrication of the uh, bearings inside the stand tube and to keep the stand tube filled with oil. And here is the sump tank. Here is the sump tank. The sump tank is for the purpose of draining the stand tube connected to the pump. The pump will take it to these two stand tube tanks, the one, the main one, and the emergency one to fill the stand tube. So if we go in here to the 3D one, here is the sum tank, as we said, it is connected to the stand tube with this pipe to fill the sum tank, which is located at a level below the stand tube level. So by gravity, it will be filled by this pump. It will be pumping the oil to the header tank. The header tank is located at a level above the stand tube, normally at a level of the standard, at the standard level. Yes. Okay, so it will be keeping based on the draft where the vessel would normally operate in. So by this gravity, it will be filling the stand tube. And this is how the system looks for the lube oil or the oil lubricated stand tube. Okay, now we will look at the seals uh, closely. So this area in between is the stand tube. It is not shown in here. So you have the aft seal, okay? And you have the forward seal. The aft seal will be uh, 
will be uh, made of three seals or sometimes four seals. Two seals will be directed to outside this to protect from the water. Normally, this is this we call it a lip seal. The lip seal, it holds the pressure where it is pointed at. So if you see it, it is pointed at outside, so it protects something from going from this direction to this direction. Where it is pointing to this direction, so it is protecting the oil from going outside. So these two are pointing outside where it is protecting the water from going inside the stand tube. And this orange is the stent tube lube oil, uh, means the, the, the oil inside the stent tube, the stent tube lube oil. Okay, you remember the, the, the aft seal uh, lube oil tank, it will be connected to a tube, the tube will pass all the way to this tube, passing through the seal, and here it goes, it lubricates the, this area between two seals, so it will protect these two seals from getting damaged, especially this one, the center one where it is not lubricated by anything. This will be lubricated by the water. This one will be lubricated by the stent tube oil, but this will run dry. So in, to avoid running dry, we are connecting it with the oil. So this is the main purpose of this one. Okay, guys, the seal will be, will be, will consist of the seals, the lip seals, one, two, three, sometimes four, it depends on the design. Every seal will be supported by the rings. This we call it the flange ring. This will be connected to the stand tube. This green, it is the stand tube. By this bolt, it will be holding on the stand tube. And here, you will have the intermediate ring, another seal, another intermediate ring, and the final one, we call it the cover ring. This will come and close on the last seal. So by means of bolts, it will connect all these rings together. Once you open the bolt, the rings will be separated and you can take the seals one by one outside. Ahmad, my voice is clear. Uh, sorry, uh, if I may ask. Uh, Definitely. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. So right now we have um, uh, this um, after stern tube seal. Yes, sir. And uh, the main purpose of uh, the replication is to replicate the seal itself, not the not the bearing that connecting the that uh, supporting the uh, the shaft. Yes, for this for this for this line. You remember when we discuss, I will go back. Okay. We have this tank with these tubes. The purpose of this tank to lubricate only these seals here, this area. But these okay. two tanks, which is A and E, the oil inside it is to lubricate the stent tube and the bearing inside the stent tube. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. So if you see, again, if you see this line, you can see this tube is this one, is this tube. It will be passing through the stand tube, and then from here, it will go inside the seal, in grooves inside the seal, uh, housing itself, and then by this tube, it will go and lubricate this area. The, the orange here, this is the oil for the stand tube. You can see a part of this, this is filled by the stand tube oil. This oil, they even here, they make it in, in orange because this is full of this orange oil we call it. Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. So now all the seal housing will not be resting on the shaft itself. Okay, I, will be... I have a question. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, lube oil, is this lube oil uh, of the stern tube will go through the lube oil cooler of the ship or, or stern tube have a, a special uh, lube oil cooler? Okay, very good. Okay, nice. I will go back for this. We don't have a loop oil cooler uh, at all for the stent tube. Okay. If you look at this area, you can see the screen now. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. The stent tube itself will be passing through what we call it a stent tube cooling tank. All this area will be filled with the distilled water and it will remain there all the time. This tank will be filled. It has nothing to do with the aft peak. Through the aft peak, you will be having another manhole and this manhole to inspect this area. And this area will be filled with water. The purpose of this water to lubricate this oil and to replicate the stuff. You, uh, you got this one. So you don't need to take this oil and take it to any cooling system. It is already cooled by this area surrounded the stand. So it remains always cool. 
Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. So this is how you call the stand tube and stand tube oil. So you don't have, you don't need to pass this one through the oil cooling system. Ahmed, again, sound you're cutting. Okay, so this tank, uh, this tank yes. is clear, uh, Ahmed? Uh, one minute, Ahmed. Uh, gentlemen, um, if anybody want to uh, if anybody wants to ask a question in Arabic, he can ask, and Ahmed he will reply in English, no problem, because Rajat within uh, with us, this is why we are talking in English. But again, the question can come in Arabic, no problem. Then uh, Ahmed he can translate it and work on it. Okay, so uh, yes, Ahmed, you yes. can start please. Okay, guys, so this is the aft stand tube cooling tank where it is cooling this area, including the oil. So no, it doesn't go as 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 your question. It doesn't go go to the loop oil system of the vessel and the coolers and all this. No, it doesn't go. Clear? Okay. okay. Now, as as I'm telling you, now this seals one, two, three, and one, two inside. It is if you can see this point in here, which is in dark blue. This is a spring. What is the purpose of this spring? Is to keep the seal tight to what we call it the liner. Okay. So what 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 is the criteria here? What what we are doing here? The seal will be very tight to what it, it rests on. And how we keep it this much tight? We tight it with the springs. Okay. So this one will be tight and, and the shaft will be turning. So the seal will be always applying a pressure on, on the area underneath. So normally the seals will be creating grooves where it is resting on, okay? So as we are having the shafting component in here and we don't need to change the shaft all over the time with after two, three, four, five years or whatever is the interval, the seals will create damage to the shaft. So in order to avoid the damage to the shaft, we have what we call it the liner, okay? What is the liner? The liner is something which is consumable. You can fit it under the shaft, connect it to the propeller, resting on the tail shaft. And the purpose of this, to take the wear which the seals will create to the shaft and avoid damaging the tail shaft. So you always, you don't need in the, in the life of the vessel to replace the tail shaft unless you have a damage or you have something which is non-standard. But once these seals are running, the grooves it creates, we are putting the liner to take the weir, and then with the time, with the four years, five years, and we have something to do, I will discuss it with you later on. Once this liner is damaged, and we can machine it for the first time and reuse it, when it reaches to its limit, we can take it out. Sorry. We can take it out and replace it. Okay, guys, is this clear? So for this, you have the forward liner, which is in here in blue, as you can see my, my, my mouse cursor. And you have the aft liner, which is here. The aft liner will be connected to the propeller in blue color, so it will be resting on something. The forward liner is here. So, uh, sorry, the, the liner is not uh, rotating. It's It will be fixed to the stern tube. And the shaft no, will be rotating the, inside. No, the liner, it is connected to the shaft. So, it will rotate with the shaft. The seal is not rotating. Okay. 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 So, that. here, if you can see, the liner is connected to the propeller. The propeller is turning. And the liner is turning. And this is fixed together and fixed to the stern tube. The stern tube is not turning. The seal is not turning. The seal is static. The liner is dynamic. It turns with the propeller. And here, the same, we are connecting it with this clambering. This clambering is, is fitted to the shaft. So the liner is fitted with this. And since this clambering is connected to the shaft in here, it will turn with the shaft. And the up and the forward seal is static, fixed to the not moving. And the liner is moving with the shaft. So the liner, is, we consider it as a part of the shaft, is the movable part. Once it gets get damaged, we throw it and bring another one. Clear? So once this uh, liner is damaged, uh, it may leak some oil or some uh, uh, inside the ship or outside to the sea. 
Correct. So what we normally do, every every dry docking of the vessel, this will be the standard job for any vessel. Once we go inside the, 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 the dock, you will be inspecting the liner, and every liner will be having machining tolerance, machining allowance. You, you can use it at a certain level. So it depends on the size. Maybe you have two, three milli to go. So if the if the, the, the liner is damaged, you can machine it and reuse it till it reaches to the limits. If it reaches to the two, three milli, it depends on the size limit. You cannot further machine it, so you replace the liner. So you don't replace it every dry docking. Maybe after 10 years of, of using it, once you, you go to the dock three or four times, you, you, you then replace it once it is very close to the limit. Clear, guys? Yes, yes, clear. Yeah. Same also here for the aft one. Okay, <clears throat> so we will be looking at the drawing, how it looks. Okay, I will keep this for the end. You see number one? Number one is the liner. You can see it is hashed here. This is the liner. The liner, this is the aft seal, okay? This liner is connected by this bolt to the propeller. So this area is the part of the propeller. This 87 is zinc anode. It is normally connected to this to protect the housing of the seal and protect the liner from corrosion and all this. So 87 is the corrosion protective, which is nothing but zinc anode. Okay, and number one is the liner. There are different types. There is a chrome liner, which is chrome plated. Okay, and there is ceramic type. There are different types. It depends on the, the type of the seal and plenty of things. But at the end, the liner is liner. It's just to protect the shaft from getting damaged by the seals. Okay. You have here hash one, hash two, hash three is the numbers of the seals. Seal ring number 31. This is the, this, this drawing, I get it from the maker. So this is the maker number. You have nothing to do, to do with it. It is sealing ring, sealing ring, sealing ring. These two, as we discussed, number one and number two for the water, and number three is for the oil. Okay, guys. So let us go to number five. Number five is the cover ring. It is nothing but a ring to close on the last seal. Okay, number four, number three, and number two. It is the number three and number four. Is the, and number two is the flange ring. So this is number two, this one. This is the flange ring, and this three and four is the intermediate rings. All these rings are connected together and all is pushed together to hold the seal. So once you need to change this seal, you open these rings, you access this seal, change it, and fit back the rings. So one seal, one ring to close on it, one seal, one ring to close on it, and the last seal and the cover, uh, cover ring. So this is how we build this seal. It is a ring, 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 seal, 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 close it together by means of bolts. Clear, guys? Yes, okay. yes, perfect. Okay, 65, what is this? This is a distant ring, okay? This is optional. This is something we do to extend even the, the life of the liner further more. What is this distance ring? Distance ring, we are getting it as a foundation of the seal. It is like 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter that we put it and remove it. For example, this once we assemble the seal for the first time, I will put this distant ring. OK, this will be, for example, a distant ring of 10 or 12 millimeter. What does it mean? It moves all the seal outside by 10 or 12. It depends on the thickness of it. And the seal will be resting on a certain point, which is in here, for example. OK. The next dry dock. The seal will create a grooves in the liner. So instead of machining the, the, the liner directly and take from the from the thickness or the allowance which I have, I will just remove this distance ring. And what once I remove it, the seal will be fitted as here. You see, this is without a distance ring. So the full seal will be moved to the forward side of the vessel and it will build another area, plain area which is not damaged, and it will give the seal a plain area so it will. It will it will start from zero again. One, but this option you can do it one time. Once you remove the the the, the distance thing, that the, the seals will move, and then you will end up with double groove, the third dry dock. At that at that condition, you have no option but to remove a machine. 
Is it clear, guys? I know it is maybe it is your first time to see something like this. Just bear with me. Is it clear? It's a good idea. Yeah, it can this give is how the things more are. years. Exactly, sir. Exactly, yes. So we don't directly, since we have a very limited area to machine in here, we don't directly recommend to machine. We recommend using this. This is a standard which we use. We either install it or remove it if it is. Installed. So if the, if we find the seal is with single groove and there is no distant ring. We install a distant ring and move it to the for aft side. If the distance ring is there and is single groove also, we remove it and move it. If we don't see it or we see it, with, but we see double groove, then we don't have any option. Further, then we have to remove the complete liner and take it to the wall. Clear? Ahmed, uh, last section was coming. <laughs> The section was coming, what, Ahmed? Sound, your sound, Ahmed, is, uh, is playing. Yeah, maybe the net and internet connection here. Okay, guys. So as I, as, I, as I said, once we inspect the seal, if we see a single groove, then we have an option to move the liner foundation. So we see if, the, if, the, if this distant ring is there, then we removed it and move it to the forward. If the distant ring is not there, then we install it and move it to the aft and use the other area where it is not utilized. Before we take it, if we open and we found double groove, so this distant ring was used before, then we have no option but to remove this liner to the workshop for machine. Clear, Ahmed? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Clear. Okay, perfect. Now the forward seal. Forward seal, similar idea, but double of seals here, only pointing to inside the stent tube. This is to protect or to avoid the stent tube oil from going inside the uh, engine room. Okay. So again, this is the uh, flange ring, which is number two in here. Okay, flange ring. This is the first one where it is supported on the stent tube. Number one is the liner, similar method, similar use, similar everything. Okay. Number three and four. Number three is the intermediate ring, which is in here. Here is single ring, not double one, since it is only two seals, not three like outside. And number four is the cover ring. This is the last ring where it is closing on the last seal. Again, here you have the uh, liner. You don't have a propeller inside it, inside the engine room, so you can rest the liner on it. So what we do, and we need to connect this liner to the shaft. We have this uh, clamp ring. Okay, the clamp ring will be like a foundation for the liner and it is very tight, very close to the shaft. It is like two split ring. You put it from downside and upside and screw it on the shaft. It will hold on the shaft and it will be like a foundation for the liner of the forward seal. Here, you don't need to have any spacer ring because it is easily you can move the liner. You don't need a spacer. You don't need to move the foundation. You just move the liner and the clamp. You take the clamp outside a little bit, you move the liner outside, or you push it inside, and you, you clamp the ring. So we don't use a spacer ring in here or a distant ring as we, as we are doing in the aft one. We just play with this clamp ring. Is this clear? I'm pointing yeah. for the same, for the wear issue of the seals, because again here the seal will cause a wear. So we just move this clamp either forward or aft, depends where it is located. Okay, guys, I will just, uh, this is basically a brief on the stand tube, the low oil stand tube. I will just take you through some photos of what we do on our daily uh, basis in ESRI, just to give you an idea what jobs we do. This is just photos for, uh, for to see what we do, and after that, we will be opening the session for any right. question. Ahmed, but uh, back to the point, uh, where it comes to change to the envir environmental field? Where it comes to change to environmental seal. Okay, we have two things, Ahmed. First of all, how the progress of these seals are, 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 uh, are moving. First, it was normal uh, loop oil. I, I'm talking mainly for this. So, this is the main important thing. Okay, uh, this number B. Okay, this this is the one where it leaks to outside of the of the uh, sea water. So. Now, what, how it goes, the, the progress of environment flandry system. First of all, 
they use here a bio oil, okay? Which is special type of oil. It is uh, it is not made of any any uh, hydrocarbons oil uh, component. It is like something like the cooking oil. I can say it is environment friendly type of oil that they are using it only for the aft seal. This is the first phase where they started. The last phase now, which most of the vessels are adapting, and the vessel calling uh, U.S. port and European port. They are using air type system, which I refer to in the in the discussion. Instead of just lubricating this aft seal where it normally leaks to the seawater, they are filling with the compressed air. It is air system. So what the compressed air will do, the compressed air will keep this area under a compressed, uh, means it will be a compressed chamber. The air will be leaked outside only air. It will lubricate this seal where it is not lubricated. And it will keep the pressure inside that stem tube that the oil inside the stem tube will not leak outside. And this compressor, which is inside, it is connected to the system where it identifies the draft and it is self adjusting the pressure of the compressor. So it will be maintaining the pressure level that the oil will never drain outside. So this is the latest one related to the environment where the vessels, certain vessels which is environment uh, concern, they are changing to this air type system, but not everyone, but most of the vessels now, this is the new era. And instead of lube oil in this tank, it is a compressor system. Is it clear? Oh, yes, yeah, fine. Okay, back to the photos. Okay, hey, I As have a question. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, we'll go take a question then before we take the photos. Yes, sir. Yes, we اه تفضل يا كنت بسال بس على الستريسز اللي بتحصل على الـ على السن تيوب وعلى البيرنج الستريسز اللي بتحصل على السن تيوب وعلى البيرنج اوكي نورمالي اه انا تمام يا اه سمعتك هجاوب احمد دلوقتي مش مهم سامعك هجاوب Okay, uh, he was asking about the stresses inside the stent tube and uh, the bearings area. Okay, one second, I have to refer to a photo. So I'll just disconnect this one for a moment, please. I have to find a photo and come back to you. Just give me a second, Ahmed. Ahmed, my wish for not to order or a list of killer. لا دلوقتي واضح يا اسامه كان الاول مش واضح. انا انا بس كنت لازم تشاكسنا لازم ما ينفعش تفضل ساكت انا مستغربك وانت ساكت. معلش يعني كنت بس بسال على الستريسز اللي ممكن تحصل على على السيرن السيرن تيوب والبيرنج وبالمره يعني الافت والفورورد سيل. حاضر هو مش مستحمل بس بيجهز حاجه وهيرجع لنا تاني. اصل انت انت وعمرو لازم تعكسونا انت ساكت وعمرو ساكت وده انا لا منه احنا بن 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 بنخزن الاسئله للاخر اه كويس انا الحوش بتاع خمس ست اسئله خمس ست اسئله درسات درسات مش كنت نحو وجدي بالعافيه لا 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 اوكي اوكي انا معاهم النهارده راجل محترم جدا على فكره وما شاء الله يعني معلومات تم في الروعه يعني يا عم ده المرجع بتاعنا في الموضوع ده. ثانية واحدة بس أنا بنقل الفايل بسرعة.
Okay. Okay, you can see my screen now. Yes. Okay, this this is not a file, so just for uh, for referring where I'm getting the information from. So this is uh, belongs to Bureau Veritas for their internal modules and something like this. Okay. So now, if you look at the shafting system in here, in the top one, you have again the propeller, the stem tube, the forward bearing, the aft bearing, the seal, aft seal, forward seal. This is the tail shaft. As we discussed, passing to the propeller, connected to the propeller, you have the intermediate shaft, and the intermediate shaft in this case is connected to the main engine. This is the crankshaft of the main engine connected in the flywheel area. Here is the flywheel. Okay, guys. So normally, this is what we expect that the tail shaft will be straight. Okay, but it is not the case. The shaft in reality will be looking like the second phase okay so it is not a single straight line and all we adjust the alignment so when we are checking the alignment between the stem tube and the engine we are not expecting to find that the stem tube is 100 percent aligned to the main engine flywheel however we are expecting it to see in this case it is 3.2 the stem the engine is dropped by the stem tube by 3.2 millimeter so the engine is normally downside. Why it is this? Because of the stresses as we discussed. Where the stress on this area comes from? It comes from the weight of the propeller. The problem which we have is on the weight of the propeller. The shaft will be also having some weight, but all the stresses, all the load on this area will be coming from the load of the propeller. The main engine itself, it is rested on its own bearings, its own foundation. So the load on this, it has been handled by the foundation of the main engine. Now, the weight of the tail in the intermediate shaft, it is normally or partially handled by the intermediate shaft bearing. The stem tube or the tail shaft, it is resting its weight on the stem tube. Now, the free end, which is the propeller weight, it is taking the load on all these components up to here, for example, up to the intermediate shaft bearing. So if you look at how it looks, how the deformation it looks, it will give you how the stresses are built on this area. The tail shaft will see you see this propeller since the weight of the propeller is very high it makes the shaft this is exa exaggerated looks but in reality it is stressed to this level okay guys so the weight of the propeller is pointing the shaft to be buckled in this way and this one since it is buckled it will be taking to the intermediate shaft in this portion that's why i tell you up to up to the intermediate bearing a slight portion of this Deformation comes to the intermediate bearing slightly, very, very minor. But the main load of the propeller is captured on this aft bearing where it is taking, which is normally the bearing which get damaged for any reason. Any small misalignment, any small damage in the shafting system, the first component on the shafting system will get damaged is the aft bearing. Now the seals, there is no loads or no stresses or nothing on the seals. The seal. Uh, as a seal, as a component, is meant to just protect the area, the water from going inside the stent tube and the oil from the stent tube to go inside the engine room. But it has nothing to do with the load. It is made of rubber. The rings are catching the rubber. The rubber is for sealing. The rubber is not taking any load. The main load on the system of the propeller, it comes on the aft bearing, slightly on the forward bearing, and the intermediate shaft where it takes the remaining of the loads of the shafts and the load which comes from the propeller. And the engine, it is connected alone. Is it clear, guys? Yes. Okay. I'll go back to my one. تمام يعني احنا كنت بس بسال على ال 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 ال
will have the load which comes from the bearing, the, the bearing which is taking the load, and the load will be transferred to the to the stern tube. But the main load, as I told you, it comes from the propeller and from the weights of the of the. Steel Thank itself you, really is a steel cool. component. There is no loads. It's not carrying, as I told you, any load. We reached to the environmental seal when you mentioned this, then we go for the photos. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, let's go. This is, I will just show you what we normally do in, in our side here. You, as you can see, this is the, 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 how it looks compared to the human sizes. So this is one of the propeller jobs which we have replaced it. As you can see, we are rigging out the propeller, lifting it outside of the dock to replace it with another propeller. Okay, guys, so as you can see, the, the, the sizes of the component we are dealing with, it is massive compared to what we see in the photos and the pictures and the drawings. So this is a rigging operation of a propeller, as you can see. Okay, I will just uh, take you quickly, and after that we can discuss it one by one or refer back to it if we it. Again, this is the propeller replacement. This is some more photos, as you can see in the left, when we are lifting it outside of the dock. We just turn the propeller to make it horizontal and lift it upside. In the middle, this is during the sequence of rigging it outside. And in the right, when we are replacing it with the floating crane from the berth to the to the jetty or the jetty to another berth, this is how the rigging operation is taking. You can see in the right, the floating crane is lifting the propeller, taking it from on board of one of the vessels to the jetty close to the dock where we are going to install. Okay, guys, uh, in the right side, as you can see, this is the seal. This is the aft stent tube seal. If you can see it, I'll just, you can you can see my pointer, okay? Oh, yeah. This is the aft stent tube seal. This is where it is shining. It is the liner. Since the propeller is removed, there is no propeller, but as you can see, it is a flange connected to the propeller. So this flange will, as you can see, some holes are there. These holes will be connected to the propeller and the liner will be passing through the seal inside the seal here somewhere and the seal will be resting on this this is the seal foundation as you see the holes in here and in the in the in this seal uh, flange ring it will be bolted on these holes as you can see the holes here on top of my pointer and this is the gasket the gasket will be installed the seal will come and we will bolt it to the stem tube so as we discussed, the seal will be static. It is bolted to the stem tube. The stem tube is not moving. The liner will be bolted to the propeller. The propeller is turning. So the liner is turning. The seal is static. Okay, guys. This is on the left side where we are rigging the propeller. You can see we are lifting it with massive things, uh, slings and tackles and many things. We lift it. We lash the propeller from the blades and we take it outside. You see, this is a normal person, 1.8, for example, meter, you can see the propeller, it is almost nine meter in diameter. So you can see the human length compared to the propeller. Okay, this is the propeller repairs where we have a, a damage in propeller. Okay, we, we make a, a welding repairs of the propeller. We check the pitch, we check the balancing. This is the propeller inside the workshop, you can see. This is the tall guy. You can see the size of the propeller to this guy. We have the balancing machine, which is the pitch of the propeller, as you can see here, it is not clear in the photo. We are putting the pitch. Ahmed, the sound is cutting, Ahmed, Ahmed, Ahmed. Clear now? Okay, this is the where we are doing the propeller repairs. We do a propeller repairs in S3. So if you have any damage in the propeller, where it touch sea lines, it touch rocket, it touch the seabed, anything, it damage the propeller blade. This is very minor damage but we have more severe damages so we build up this area we repair it with welding and we do balancing to make sure that the propeller is balanced and we check the pitch to check the pitch as well of the propeller to make sure that the pitch of the blades are equal and similar to the standard one Here is the balancing of the propeller. You can see we have a balancing device. What is the balancing? When we add a weight or take a weight from any blades, we need to make sure that all the blades are equal in weights and equal in balance, okay? 
Why this one? Because if we have the weight of this blade more than the other blades, for example, when we are turning, when the propeller is turning in the water, it will create vibration. So to avoid a vibration, we have to make sure that the weights of the blades will be having a differences for two, but the differences within the limits. It depends what is the limit, the limits of any misbalance of any blades. It depends on the size and the weight of the propeller. So once we find any blades is the weight is more than others, we have to grind it off and make sure that the weights are equal and the propeller is balanced. Clear, guys? Yes. Okay, this is some of the jobs we do. We do in situ machining of the stand tube. Why we do in situ machining of stand tube? Sometimes we need to replace the bearings or the housing will be damaged where the bearing will be resting. You see this area where the bearing will be resting. So sometimes for any reason, for water ingress, for anything that, that the area will be damaged, we need to machine the stand tube. So we fix our in, in situ machining tools and we do the machine as you see here in the photo. So this is the types of jobs also we do. We do new installation. You can see on the, on the right side, this is a white metal bearing. This is the stand tube bearing. Okay, so this is the out bearing. You see this bearing will be slide, will be fitted inside the stand. Okay, guys, so this is how it looks. Ahmed, this is Ahmed, that. Pardon? Okay. Okay. Okay, guys, as you can see on the right side, this is the bearing. Thank you. Listen, Ahmed. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Okay, you can see in the right of the screen, this is an out stand tube bearing. This is the bearing how it looks. Okay. No, yeah. No, yeah. Listen. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Okay, now okay. Okay. So this is how the stent tube bearing looks. I hope I will not repeat it for the first time. This is how the stent tube bearing looks. Okay, guys. So this bearing will be fitted inside the shaft. And here where the shaft will pass and will be supported. So this is. This is not important. I, no, no, we will avoid it. This is the aft bearing. Again, Ahmed is not clear. Okay, now this is the aft bearing, guys, on the right hand side. This is the aft bearing. This is the bearing before we install it inside. Is it clear, Ahmed? Well, the bearing does a lot more than that. Oh. But it's important. It's not hard. I'm sitting. Now it's okay. Yeah, we're going to get it. How about this button? Let me turn. Yeah, just turn it. Okay. Rajat. Yes, Ahmed. Just we are making fun of Ahmed because the Mr. Bano. The superintendent that's showing in the photo he doesn't want to go uh, in public. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are playing with him with the Arabic words. Whenever he goes on the aft bearing, his voice breaks. Ah, yes. He doesn't want to show the aft bearing. Ahmed, I want to hide his phone. This is the confidential information. Okay, guys, it's clear now. <laughs> yes, yeah, let's start. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so this is the aft bearing, guys. This is where it is fitted inside the stand tube. This all will be fitted inside the stand tube and then supported. What in time? Ahmed, I did aft bearing, but Ahmed, I'm going to go to the aft bearing. Okay. New installation. 
Okay, again, this is the uh, this is on the right side, top side where we are installing the bearings. Okay, this is a bearing installation as you can see here in the middle. Okay, new CPP propeller blades. Okay, this is the chalk fast of the aft bearing. Clear, Ahmed, the sound? Ah, oh, yes. So it is the problem in the aft bearing. Okay. Okay. So this is the alignment guy. When we are doing alignment of the stern tube, this is the stern tube. This is the up, uh, this is the forward bearing. He is inside the engine room. The alignment technician. And this is the tube. The Sorry, can you please tell again uh, why we use the uh, truck fast? Okay, I'll go back. Yeah. Okay. This is different type. This is a small vessel actually. Okay, in the in the left side. This is not a big vessel. Okay. So we have what we call it the spider outside what is the spider the spider is the aft bearing support this is water lubricated type this there is the no frame. this what we call the frame also right or the a frame correct the spider or the a frame or i frame when it is connected only by one by one support not double here this is the a frame so in order to make the to align this one with the stem tube this will be an outside support of the shaft okay Again, this is not oil lubricated system. This is water lubricated system. The bearing here will be cutlass or will be thordon or whatever is the type, but it is water lubricated. We do the alignment of this. Uh, the spider will be there. The bearing inside will be having a an housing and the housing will be aligned with the stent tube by the means of where it is located toward the stent tube. Once we fix it, we pour this chalk fuss. What is the chalk fuss? Chalk fuss is a component like a cement like the cement which you use it for the construction, but it is a marine uh, application uh, cement, okay? But it is not cement, it is a compound. This compound will be mixing two components together, and when it dries, it makes it very, very strong, very strong element, okay? So it, it, it turns from liquid to solid, and then it will hold the piece where it is poured in, in the same location. So once we fix anything, the gap between the housing and the A brackets in this case will be filled with chalk fast. The chalk fast will dry and it will keep the housing at the location where it is supported in. I hope I'm clear with this. Clear, guys? Okay. Uh, your sound is clear. Uh, Amr, it's okay, that question? Yes, thank you. Here is the alignment. As you can see, we are making a laser alignment of the stent tube. You can see the source of the laser in the middle one. It is in the flywheel, and we check the alignment toward the stent tube. Okay, guys. This is the steering gear system, the rotary vent system overall. This is a big topic that we can discuss it in two, three slides, or not slides, presentation. But this is uh, something which we do also in, in ASRI. We do the overall and the repair of the system. And the thruster overall, again, a big topic, but we can discuss it also in details, but it takes a long time. But this is how it looks. This is the stern thrusters, the bow thrusters, uh, thrusters, any type of thrusters we overall here in Asia as well. Okay, this is one of the interesting projects which we do a blue fitting. This is something I will refer to it very quickly. Uh, that the shaft will be fitted on the propeller. Uh, this area is normally tapered. Guys, so in order to make sure that the propeller is sitting properly on the shaft, we do something called blue fitting or uh, fitting verification. We apply a blue dye on the shaft and we fit the propeller on it and we make sure that the propeller is properly sitting on the shaft by checking the dye where it will be printed on the propeller. Okay, guys, this is a big topic, but I will just refer to it very quickly. Just we 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 paint the, the shaft with a blue dye. We set the propeller on it and take the propeller outside, and we will see exactly where the propeller is resting and how much is rested on. So normally, as per the classification societies, it, it has to be 70% or more. So all the area inside the propeller has to be rested on. <laughs> this is the last one. This is the last one. Okay. Enough. Back, back to the stern tube by bearing. Bearing can the arm and then are you? Oh. Are you? Okay, guys. Very quickly. This is the stern tube. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. This one will be better. So here, here, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, يا بقى اول مشكله في الشفت في في البيرنج احمد بص هو هو ممكن يسجله لنا صوت يبعته مثلا ممكن لو الموبايلات ما فرقعتش خلاص حلو حلو ده البيرنج ذس از ذا بيرنج اون ذات سيت ذات سيت ذس از ذا بيرنج ذس از ذا بيرنج لا لا هو صوتك واضح كمل طب ما اعمل ايه ما انا اوكي ذس بيرنج ويل جو انسايد ذا ستيم تيوب ذس بيرنج ويل جو انسايد ذا ستيم تيوب So the shaft will be resting on this area here, as you can see inside the bearing. Clear, Ahmed? Clear, clear. No, no, no. So the bearing, this bearing will go and be fitted inside the stent tube. The stent tube, as we agreed, is just a steel tube, nothing else. And this is the bearing component. It is made of white metal. We call it white metal. And here, the, where the shaft will pass and will be resting on this area. Okay, guys. Another one will be there, which is the forward bearing. It will be much smaller than this one. This is the aft one. Will be more lengthier than the other one. The other one will be normally half size or maybe one third the size of this one in length. Why do we have grooves on the side? Okay, this as you can see, there are some holes in here. This is to allow the oil inside the stent tube to lubricate the bearing. You see, guys, there is a channel in here. There is channel in here. The oil inside the stent tube, because the clearance of this shaft and the bearing is normally depends on the size again, but it may be one millimeter or 0.9, one milli, 1.2. It depends on the size of that. So one milli, and the shaft will be resting downside, so it will not be lubricated properly. So in order to force the oil to pass through all the bearing, we made this channel that we made. This is the this is the standard design, and we'll be having some holes. The oil will go from the stem tube all over this channel and will be poured inside the bearing from the port. So these are the lubrication holes. Clear, guys? Again. Okay, I will come to this. Uh, just one, one. You see, guys, I, I want to show you something in here. You can see these grooves in here. Okay. Yes, and this one, one groove in here. Okay. You see this one, the small one. This is where the lubrication oil will be passing through. You remember the aft seal the lubrication tube. You will have one tube passing through. It will pass through here. Okay, guys. The other one you have two downside. I hope it is clear. Okay. Okay. These two. Okay. One will be the return line which we discussed. Okay. And the th the third one will be for the sensor. Normally this bearing will be controlled or will be monitored by the temperature sensor. Amr, 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 Amr,
so it is maybe two or three layer of custard on the top of the cast iron foundation of this. All of this we call it up here. Is it clear, guys? Sure, 90% uh, clear. Your sound was cutting was 10%. Yeah. But uh, so it is soft, it is soft layer all around casted, centrifuged with the uh, iron casting uh, bearing in order to, to make it soft for the shop. Exactly, yes, yes. Okay, let us see. Any questions? Ah, yes, Fadal, any question? No, sir. Amr. Amr, what? Sorry, I'm not going to mute. I'm going mute. Did you see Amr? الو في اسئله يا شباب عمرو او سام اه اه تمام قول يا عمرو اتفضل هو اول حاجه آه طبعا انا بش يعني يعني ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ذا جريت برزنتيشن يعني بجد والله انا استفدت كتير جدا يعني شكرا يعني <تصفيق> دلوقتي الكونكشن اللي هي بتنقل الثراست من الـ من البروبالشن سيستم للهل Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I will take you to the second presentation. Bashmandis, we have what is the difference normally between any any engine, industrial engine, and the marine engines? We will not talk about the slow speed, the big ones, because this is dedicated for the vessel. Okay. So the difference between the marine we when we when we check, a, for example, a caterpillar engine. Or any engine that can be used for the small boats that the similar size will be having industrial engines. Ahmad, if my sound is breaking, <laughs> stop me, please. Okay. So what is what is the difference between these two? We, we, the difference is what we call it the block of the thrust bearing. Okay. The propeller, when it turns, it creates a thrust that will push the shaft to the forward. Okay, guys? Because it pushed the vessel, so it generates what we call it a thrust. The thrust will be taken and absorbed and going to the hull structure by what we call it the thrust bearing. Okay. So for any any engine will having will be having either in built in, which is in most of the cases thrust bearing, or in some engine where the thrust bearing will not be there, we will have a block of thrust bearing. So one second, I'll just go back here. It will be something like Okay, now it's breaking. Okay, can you hear now? So yes. Like, like this intermediate bearing, if the thrust bearing. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. Okay, when you have the, the, the engine is not fitted with the thrust bearing, you will be having a thrust bearing block somewhere here. Like here, this is the coupling, but it will be located in the aft side of the engine connected to the shaft and this is where it will handle the thrust build from the no, go to my yeah? no i didn't i and i'm going so can you hear me now yes father. Okay, so the thrust will be handled by either a separate block of thrust bearing or the thrust bearing which is built inside the engine. The last bearing will be fitted with thrust block, thrust pads inside the main engine, and this is where the thrust generated by the propeller will be diverted and go to the structure of the hull. Is this uh, answer your question, Bishmanus? Perfect, perfect. Uh, second question. Uh, removing technique يعني انا دلوقتي لو لما باجي لما بتيجي تشتغل في المينتنس ممكن تعمل ريموفنج لل للشافت uh, او بعد ما بتخلص الريبير بتاعك بتبدا تدخله تاني في المركب فالتكنيك اللي بتستخدمها للريموفنج لو بس تدي حتى بريف سريع انا عارف ان هو توبيك شور 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 اوكي 
So the question is, what is the techniques or what is the procedure we use to remove the tail shaft? Okay. As you can see, here is the standard one. We have the tail shaft inside the stand tube and we have the intermediate shaft. Okay. First of all, we start with removing the propeller. Okay. The most heaviest thing in the component, in the system. Okay. So we hang either uh, air hoist, chain blocks, or what, uh, whatever lifting tools you're using, tackles. So in some cases, we have something called tackles. Tackles is something like lifting equipment, like the tackle, but it can handle up to 130 tons and above 160 tons. It depends on the size of the propeller. So we have up to 160 ton tackles in the yard in Asri, for example. So we start first with the removal of the propeller. So we slag the propeller and we take the propeller outside. The propeller is fitted to the shaft by hydraulic system. It is hydraulically fitted. This is again, it is, a, it is a topic to discuss, but what we what we do, we, we fill a chamber between the propeller and the tail shaft with oil under a high pressure, 600, 700 bars, the propeller will expand and it will go outside of the shaft. And again, when we are fitting, we are expanding the propeller and pushing it by a hydraulic nut in here. There is underneath this cap, this, uh, this cap hydraulic nut where it during fitting will push the propeller in its place okay so first we remove the propeller outside so the system is straight and the system is released from the load of the propeller then we start with the intermediate shaft the intermediate shaft will be coupled by coupling bolt as you can see here to the tail shaft we remove those bolts and we remove the bolts, which is connected normally to the flywheel. In here, in this case, it is a gearbox, but normally it will be connected to the flywheel of the vessel or the gearbox. Then we release the intermediate shaft bearing, take the top cap up outside. This is a top cover, it can be removed. And then we remove the shaft either upside or downside. For example, if you see in this drawing, you cannot put it downside because the foundation is rigid foundation some foundation will be this hole will be opened up to the top side where the shaft will go down side anyways either up or down the bearing the, the shaft will be removed and then you start pulling the tail shaft to the location of the starboard uh, of the intermediate shaft uh, bearing so the tail shaft will be rigged from inside by chain block and gradually we pull it inside to take the place of the intermediate shaft where we release the stand tube from the shaft. As you can see here, I have a photo. Can you see it, guys? Okay, so this is the intermediate shaft. In this case, it goes downside. The downside shaft here, this is the intermediate shaft. We put the shaft downside. After that, it releases the place for the tail shaft. The tail shaft, we lift it, we push it, we, we pull it inside. And in that case, we lift it slightly upside so we can do the alignment in here. So the downside on the bottom is the tail shaft, is the intermediate shaft. And on the top side is the tail shaft. You can see it is still hanging with the sling because this is the second one come outside. And we keep it hanged because it used the same lifting tools for the intermediate shaft. We use it in this case for the tail shaft. So this is the sequence. The sequence, you remove the propeller where it is the heaviest component, put down or put up the intermediate shaft, and then start pulling inside the tail shaft. And then you have the stem tube opened for inspection. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, sorry, one more question. Uh, sure. If there is any deformation in the, sh in the shaft, uh, if it has some damage or deformation, uh, what what uh, you can do to remove it from the hull? Okay. Normally, Especially if the damage also extended to the stern tube. Okay. Normally, in, in such a big vessels like this, you will not be having a, a massive uh, deformation. It is very rare. I haven't seen in my career. I came across one time where it goes and it reached, it was bent that they start gouging and cutting the shaft. Okay, but this is very, very, very rare. It means it is not something common because as you can see, this shaft, for example, from ice, I can see that this is like 800 and above millimeter in diameter. So it is very solid, very strong. Normally, if something goes to the propeller, the propeller blades will get damaged, but the shaft will not be damaged. Till this shaft will get damaged means you have a major accident. And in that case, normally you 
your, your voice. Yeah, so I'm saying if you reach to, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, so if you reach that this tail shaft is bent, means you have very hard grounding, for example, or hard damage that you have to change in that case, mostly the stem tube and the tail shaft and everything. So you end up with cutting the shaft in some cases, but this is very, 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 very rare. It doesn't happen normally. Maybe it happens often uh, in, in the smaller ships. Correct. In the smaller ship, all the time, yes. But it, in that case, it is very easy to handle. But in the big vessels, no. Yeah. So you you recommend that it, you, uh, you cut uh, the shaft? You will cut, you cut, we cut the shaft. For example, in this case where you were asking, this is uh, 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 whoever asked for the choke fast. This was vessel and service. And once it has a grounding, we end up changing the, the A bracket, the spider. We, we end up changing the hub and realign the system and everything. So this one was due to a grounding. Normally in the small vessels is very common and we end up changing everything, realigning everything and changing the shaft in that case. Okay. Uh, so uh, my uh, last question, uh, you, you mentioned some types of water cooling uh, uh, stand tubes. Yeah, this is the one, yeah. Yes, so uh, salt water uh, usually have some uh, fouling, some, uh, I believe there will be many problems in this. Very uh, good. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can highlight some of the yeah, visual uh, yeah, very, 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 very good question, yeah. yeah. See, as I told you, even not only from the fouling and all this, even from the sand going inside the stand tube and damaging this one, so normally this system will be having, a, I have it in one photo, I will just explain you and take you, it will be having a separate pump for this type of stem tube where the water, you can see the water flow the diagram, it is from inside to outside, you can see? Mm -hmm. Though it is merged in the water and the water can go inside, but once the vessel is in operation, a high pressure line will be connected here, pushing the water all the way outside. So normally the stem tube will be in a pressure more than the outside pressure, taking mm -hmm. everything outside and not allowing any debris or any fouling or any uh, sand to go inside. This is how it looks. You can see this is this is a water lubrication system. This is the same system of this one, okay? And this mm -hmm. drone. You can see this here, this system in here. Yes. This is a pump, and this pump is connected to this pipe, white pipe, and here it is connected to the beginning of the stem tube. You can see it is in here. You can see. Here in yes, this area, yes. and here the water will go and keep pushing the water inside. This is the same sort. This is the same system. This is the pump, and here is the connection. And here it keeps all the time this under a uh, seawater stand tube. Where you, the vessel is stopped, you shut down this system, and the seawater will remain inside. But once it is in operation, you start running the pump. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, I have. And we push it outside. Right, Ahmed? I, I didn't get Ahmed. What you uh, what, uh, say again? No, I'm summarizing it. So you mean that the air will always keep in pushing the water outside? To, uh, no, not to all, avoid here, No, no, this is seawater. It will be seawater, not air. Seawater. Okay, this 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 is this is a sea pump. It takes a seawater and pump it in this system inside inside the stent tube. So a, a seawater will be pushing a seawater outside. Okay. So it will maintain that this is this seawater. It comes from this pump. The pump is taking it from the strainer. So it is uh, a seawater without any sand, without any something that we are afraid of the bearing that it will damage the bearing. It is filtered seawater, let us say, and it will push this water inside the stem tube and avoiding anything from the seawater to go inside. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, I have just one more comment. Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, is it okay if I can share uh, my screen? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm radical. Oh, yeah, I think so, Ahmed. You have to give him, yeah. Yeah, I have. I have the permission. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> you uh, you can see my screen now. Yes. 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 yes this is a small. Uh, which maybe uh, if I remember, a five hundred ton uh, tanker. Yes. Um, like fifty two uh, meters, something like this. Uh, yeah. But for for example, if if you are talking about uh, the weight of uh, this bus, this uh, propeller, yes, uh, and some uh, other others, uh, I came across this. Uh, second. Yeah, this rather. Oh, it's not here. Yeah. This one. You see this rudder? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's say that uh, it's the same uh, same rudder uh, here in this picture. Yeah. Uh, if we having like a support from from the rudder shaft uh, supporting yeah. the weight of the propeller, uh, this may uh, reduce the the stress on the over the shaft. Okay. No. Uh, here, uh, can you go back to your uh, solid works? Can you go back to this uh, rudder? Yes. Yeah. You see the area here in the in the, in the rudder. This mm -hmm. area will be having what we call it the rudder horn. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This area. Okay. So this area will be having a bearing to support this rudder, but. By any means, the rudder cannot be connected with the propeller or the tail shaft. The rudder will be a separate entity. So the support which we are doing it for the rudder cannot be because the propeller will be a turning component. Okay. And mm -hmm. this rudder horn, the rudder horn where it will come and support the rudder, the rudder will be turning 30, 35 degrees or, or whatsoever degrees, port and starboard side only. Okay. Where the propeller is turning in rotational motion. Okay. So the, the support of this, the, the, the other horn will be working as a door hinge, زي, زي like a door hinge. So only to support the rudder itself, but by any means you cannot connect it to the tail shaft in this case. This is a separate two entity. You can go back to the to the to the uh, to your drawing. Yeah. So in this case, if you want to do the rudder horn will be from the in front of the rudder stock in front of your rudder stock and taking all the way to the front of the propeller, okay? but has nothing to do by the structure of the propeller. Yes, the propeller I understand. I mean, if we yeah. made like a modification of this uh, uh, design so that uh, right here we can have uh, some of this shaft and uh, making a, a special connection to this post. So the post will keep rotating and it have like a building support here in this area. Uh, could be. I haven't seen it to, to be honest uh, before. It hasn't it hasn't been there, but we may study it further. It is not there anywhere. But I understand what you want to say. You want to make the, the, the rudder horn with a special bearing, for example, to rest the propeller on it. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the problem that also what we what we will face in this case that you will be stricting the flow of the propeller. So if you put a structure in front of the propeller, it has to be studied by CFD software yeah. or something where if we put something in front of this, the bearing has to be supported by structure around it. You cannot keep the bearing uh, alone. So the structure to hold the, the weight from the propeller, you have to have some side supports, top supports and all this. We have to think about the design and run a simulation for this. Yes, yeah, it is an yes, idea. Yes. It is an idea. Yeah, it is an there idea. are some designs I came across with duct. Have a, yeah. a, a yeah. Bit here. This will be uh, like a port nozzle or something. Yes, yeah. uh, this nozzle yeah. is uh, it's not the court nozzle, the normal court nozzle. It's just a duct to Mules. improve the flow of the uh, uh, flow uh, of the, uh, the flow around the propeller. So uh, maybe this duct will be connected here and then we use a part of it as a holder or uh, a, a, with the connection bearing uh, to the boss of the propeller, re relieving the weight and reducing the stresses uh, over the shaft. Yeah, it could be, could be. It has okay. to, as, as, as I said, it has to be studied in terms of structure and how the component will be and run a simulation for the, for the flow. Yes. 
the final note I will uh, ask you today. Uh, I also work it on uh, some academic uh, project, uh, maybe a uh, few, many years ago, but I stopped. I didn't, uh, I didn't continue with this uh, project. Yeah. Uh, um, so let's say my, my project was about this uh, area. Okay. See this area? Yeah. And also this connection. So uh, the most complication in, in, in this, uh, in the whole stern tube is this connection and this connection. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking about making this part, a separate part, this whole part of the ship as a separate part. And it all will be with uh, rivets or uh, uh, it can be uh, connected mechanically, not okay. the welding. Okay. So yeah, that uh, in, in installation and maintenance, it will be much easier to assemble this uh, part of the stern tube uh, outside the ship and uh, close it with bolts and then connect it with a ring to uh, the ship. Yeah. The same also in this part, this internal part. I will be uh, like a separate part and connected only with the ship with uh, some uh, uh, bolts like a uh, ring or something. Yeah. Uh, from your uh, experience, would this application be useful in saving maintenance time or uh, uh, installation time? Okay. Uh, as an idea, it is good idea, but uh, based on what what we have as a, as a maintenance, as a usual maintenance, let us say, that the maintenance of this part is not a common uh, issue. For example, the bearing, you don't change it. If everything runs smoothly, you don't end up with big, means in a vessel lifetime, you don't touch the stem as a structure, okay? If you have unforeseen or any damage or something, you end up with changing the bearing, which is a very easy operation. You just pull, as you saw, the, 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 the bearing which we were talking about with where the sound was always interrupting, you pull the bearing outside, the damaged one, you push new bearing inside. But as a structure of the aft part, we normally don't touch it. We don't get, unless you have a grounding, this is something very rare. It means it is not like a common practice that you have a grounding in this area. It is very rare. And the grounding till it reach to, to damage the stent tube structure, it means something massive happened which is, uh, you, I can tell you, means 0.01% that may happen. means it is very, very, very rare situations. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the maintenance which we do there is normally changing the bearings, changing the, the, the seals, which is commonly on every dry room, and checking and inspecting the bearing where we need to change it in every 20 years or more, depends on if it is running smoothly, everything is controlled, the temperature was monitored properly, the lobe oil was running properly, you don't damage the bed. You get my point. Yeah. So maybe so, in the smaller ships, it will be more common. Uh, in, uh, save some yes, time for correct, smaller yes, ships. Correct, yes. If you look at the smaller ships, yeah, the tendency there is more. Ship. Correct, correct, yes. So you may study something like this to make it more easier for the smaller vessel where you can do very fast modification to change but for a smaller vessel you have always to consider the cost because yes. the cost of a smaller vessel and the operation of a smaller vessel it runs with very cost control compared to the larger vessel where yes. time for the larger vessel is more important than the cost. okay thank you very much thank you sir.